when I first went to stay with John Fu, he made a comment one night that really struck me. He was talking about a John Lee and his debt to a John Lee. Saying it was because of a John Lee that he came to see the brightness of life. This struck me because I had heard so often the Buddha, the Buddha teaching that life is suffering, that that was the first noble truth. Turns out it's not anybody's noble truth at all. After all, there are four noble truths about life, and one of them is that there is a cessation to suffering, and another is that there's something you can do to get there. That's where the brightness lies. The Buddha talks about people being born in darkness and going in light, born in light and going in light, born in darkness and going in darkness, born in light and going in darkness. And it doesn't matter how you come. What matters is how you go. And going in light means you practice. So the light is not the fact that we can live in comfortable surroundings, or be powerful, or beautiful, or wealthy, or whatever. Light comes from the good things we build into the mind, the good qualities we build into the mind. And that's very liberating, because there are a lot of people who, as they're born into this lifetime, will never gain much wealth, never have much power. But they can still go in light. They can still practice. Because the choices we make as we practice are things that we're free to make, regardless of our surroundings. Like right now. You're sitting here quietly. You're focusing on your breath. Now the surroundings are nice, in the sense that it's quiet. We live here at a monastery where there's a value placed on the practice. But even if you were placed somewhere where people didn't have those values, but you still wanted to practice, you could find a way to practice that they wouldn't notice. They wouldn't even know. But you could still work on skillful qualities in the mind. Patience, endurance goodwill, equanimity. These are all things that we're free to develop. So the path is wide open. It's simply that a lot of people resist. They want to look for light in other things. They're perfectly happy where they are. They don't want to be told that they're living in darkness. It's like people living in a cave. And they've got a little flickering fire, so they can see some of the features of the walls of the cave. If someone comes in and says, there's a lot more light outside, a lot more openness outside, and they'd be foolish to want to stay on in the cave, but there are a lot of people who are like that. They want to find their meaning in having an influence on day-to-day -day life, influence on other people. But a large part of accepting right view is that Realizing that you are in darkness. The Buddha talks about the mass of darkness that is formed by ignorance. And we're here to pierce that mass. Now, to do that requires that we develop our concentration, we develop our discernment, all the qualities of the Noble Eightfold Path, but particularly the discernment. You engage in the path, and then you reflect on it. The Buddha said this is how the Dharma is found, by committing to the path, and particularly committing to what he calls the heightened mind, getting the mind in concentration, getting in right concentration, which implies all the factors of the path, and then watching what you're doing. And this is ability to 
watch ourselves in action where we begin to see where the ignorance has been and where we've been acting in a lot of ignorance. And when we can see that, it changes the nature of our actions. When the Buddha said that the mind is naturally luminous, he didn't mean that it's naturally pure or it's already awakened. Simply that it can observe itself. That luminosity of the mind, he said, is the prerequisite for the fact that we can develop good qualities in the mind. We follow the path that the Buddha himself followed. We act, and then we reflect on our actions. We focus on the breath, and then we reflect on the way we're focusing. What's involved in the focusing? Dogen, the Zen master, talks about just sitting. But his version of just sitting isn't that you just sit there. You ask questions about what's happening while you're sitting. Is the mind sitting in the body? Is the body sitting in the mind? What's going on? In the same way from the Buddhist point of view. He says that concentration is a perception attainment. Okay, what perception are you bringing to the breath? One of the things that I found especially illuminating in John Lee's teachings was his take on what it means to focus on the breath and what kind of breath you're focusing on. In the ancient texts, the in and out breathing is just one part of the wind element, and there's also the wind that goes throughout the entire body. And John Lee had the insight to say that you can connect those two concepts. When you're breathing in and out, aware of the whole body, you're aware of the whole wind element in the body and how it relates to the breath. In other words, the energy. And just by changing that perception, it changes breath meditation immensely. Because after all, the Buddha says, you're going to be trying to get the mind so it can settle down and have a sense of pleasure, refreshment, and then you spread that pleasure and refreshment throughout the body so there's no part of the body that's not saturated or suffused with that pleasure and rapture. And when you think of the whole body breathing, it's a lot easier for those feelings to flow. This is where you bring the luminosity of the mind to bear. You watch what you're doing. And you figure out what's skillful and what's not, what's getting good results and what's not. You want to bring that light, that luminosity of the mind, to bear on the areas where it is really ignorant, where there is darkness. Because there are clouds on that luminosity. The Buddha compares it to the sun, with clouds coming and going. And there's a big maelstrom of clouds that swirls around ignorance, and then the fabrications we make based on the ignorance and the way we look at things, the way we deal with things, our intentions. For most of us, that's in the dark. So as we meditate, we're trying to bring some light to that by the way we re reflect on our actions. So even though the world may seem dark at times. We don't have to have, allow that darkness to affect the light of the mind, the potential for light in the mind. The potential is there. It's simply a matter of learning how to develop it. Once we start shining a light in the mind, then the darkness doesn't have a, the right to stay. And John Sweat made this comment one time. When the light of awareness, the light of discernment comes in. Even though there are areas of the mind that have been dark for aeons, they can't say, well, we've been here first. You have no right to come in. You bring the light in and the darkness has to go. We do have that power to bring light to what we're doing. And it's in this way that we discover the brightness of life, that through our actions we can put an end to suffering. 
because it turns out the suffering that weighs down the mind is the suffering that we're creating for ourselves, the suffering that comes from outside, all the problems of human society, the problems of living in a level of being where there's a lot of aging, illness, and death, a lot of conflict. That doesn't have to weigh the mind down. So if you're looking for a meaning in life, the meaning comes with the light that you bring to what you're doing. Because the world is going to stay on in its world ways. Even though we've had a Buddha and we've had many enlightened disciples, people are still fighting, still very ignorant. If we had to wait for everybody to get an awakening before we could get an awakening, it would never happen. Fortunately, we can light our path. And in lighting our own path, we can provide some light for others. So that those who want to light their own path can see this example, that it is possible. After all, as the Buddha said, the whole of the holy life is having admirable friends, because they're the ones who show us that it is possible. So that's the light that they, they leave behind. So look for what brightness you have in your mind, your ability to observe yourself, to observe yourself in action. And think about how the Buddha stressed this point from the very beginning, his instructions to his seven-year-old son, all the way to his instructions on how to bring the mind to ultimate emptiness. It's all about reflecting. Reflecting that light back on your actions and deciding that you're going to try to be as skillful as you can. That's how you pierce the darkness and find how bright life can actually be.